It's Cape Chronicle. I'm Jacob McClellan. Last year, a man suffered a heart attack at the Cape Girardeau Chinooks and nearly died. Fortunately, two off-duty firefighters are Chinooks employees. They quickly sprang into action and saved his life. I'm joined now by these two firefighters, uh, Steve Murley and Debbie Moffin. Thank you so much for coming by to talk with us today. No problem. Thank you. Well, let's talk. Uh, this is tell us walk us through a little bit what happened that day um, in, in Schnooks. Well, I was working. I had been working in the pharmacy in the back. I'm also a pharmacy tech. Heard my name over the PA head. I was with the customer. Just let it drop. Uh, another employee come running around the corner saying, "We've got a medical emergency. We need you up front." As I rounded the corner, Steve was walking into. The front doors to relieve me to go home and he seen what was going on. Steve came up and one of our fellow employees, George Coleman, was on the ground. Uh, Steve got down and assessed and found out that George didn't have a heartbeat and asked that I go get the AED and when we brought back the AED, uh, we applied and, and done our procedures. No, no what's, a, what's an AED? It's an automated, automated external defibrillator. <laughs> But it's a it it's an electronic pad that you put on your bot on the patient's body, and if it finds a, that the body is in or the heart's in V-fib, it'll shock the heart so that it can stop it, and maybe the and hopefully the automatic pacemakers in the heart and body will pick up and start the heart to beat again. So um, so he, he he collapsed. You mm -hmm. both came to to to, mm -hmm. to help. You be, Steve, did you begin CPR? Is that what happened while she applied the... the we actually, it was, it was a lot quicker than this. It was like, boom, it was, the AED was only like five or six feet away. So we applied the AED and it initiated and it's, it went through its system and it said it advised a shock. So we shocked. And then we shocked and we started CPR. So we did a round of CPR and then assessed the patient. The patient had a pulse. So we then just started assisting his breathing at that time. You, an AED, is that something that's common for a, for a place like Schnooks to have on hand like this? Actually, they had just gotten it probably two or three months. They had gotten it in June yeah. and had just trained the managers of how to use it. They trained the managers CPR and how to use the, the defibrillator. And so luckily they had it mounted on the wall a few weeks afterwards. And it was, like Marley said, it was right there. Yeah. So... And that, that's a that's a company-wide program too. I don't know how many Schnooks actually have them now. I know they were going through phases in, in so many stores at a time. So Schnooks as a as a corporation went ahead and you know spent the money and, and did it mostly throughout Missouri. Could you, you, you brought one mm -hmm. in? I'd love to uh, I, I'd love to see this. Well, they come um, in a little case and it has a little storage case in the back for various items. Mm -hmm. But you pop it out. And a lot of, it, it, there's different varieties. This does happen to be the kind that Schnooks carries uh, in their store. But it tells you on the side of it if the battery's dead. If this is in red, the battery's dead, it's paperweight. If it's green, you're good to go. And if, when you open it up, the pads should be connected, ready to go. And it'll analyze the system, make sure that it's ready to use. And once it gets going, it also talks to you. Open package. And, and as you see, it, it <laughs> talks to you. And it'll prompt you through Chill each each and item. Then. I'm going to shut that up for a minute. Uh, but it'll prompt you through each item. It'll tell you. And it even on the pads itself has pictures as to where the place pads on pers the patient's body. You know, up high and one low. And it walks you through. But your adrenaline is rushing so fast. That you're thinking come on come on and it's trying to get you to a workable pace mm -hmm. so that you don't miss anything so that you don't you know overlook something or you don't hurt yourself because when this thing wants to shock and you press that button whoever touches this patient's going to feel the shock also so but it's it's a really neat item and some have pads that have uh, the pads and plus a breast uh, breastplate that show you how to do your CPR. It'll tell you whether you're not going deep enough or if you're doing a right, the right amount of compressions per minute. So we, 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 we didn't get to the, uh, to, the, to the end of the story here though. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you, 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 used the, you used this machine, you um, used CPR. Mm -hmm. 
um, called the fire department, or somebody called the, the called right. the, the, the fire department. When they when the fire department when they when they, when they arrived was was your was your coworker was did he have a heartbeat at that time? Yes, he had a heartbeat at that time. So we just took over. We started using a bag valve mask to help breathe because mm. he was breathing on his own, but not not good enough. We we wanted him to have a little bit more oxygen. And um, when they got there, we assisted that. Then I went ahead and, um, since I'm a paramedic with the fire department, went ahead and started a line on him. Um, and then the ambulance came in pretty well, a little bit behind us. And then by that time, they put their monitor on, got a blood pressure real quick, and transported to the hospital. And he was, he, he, he knew what was going on at that time, but he really wasn't talking as much, so. Would, would your coworker would he have survived this if um, if if this AED were not there at Chinooks and if the two of you um, with your training didn't happen to be at Chinooks at that time? Yeah, that's hard to say. I would hope another bystander would have would have started CPR, but it, probably not. I mm -hmm. mean, um, he needed the shock from the AED to restart his heart. Um, his doctor said he had a cardiac event where basically his heart, start just, heart just stopped and it needed that shock to restart it. And without that, it would have been someone having to do CPR until the fire department arrived with an AED. Mm -hmm. And that was about another probably five to six minutes from the time we started to before the fire department got there. And then another four or five minutes. Then after that, the ambulance got there. Um, as I understand it, he wasn't even supposed to be at, at, at work that day, correct? Well, he had gone to his cardiologist that morning, and the cardiologist said there was not a problem, mm. that he didn't foresee any problem. It was just George was there bagging. He is one of our baggers at work, and he was bagging, and just he had asked the customer, do you want paper or plastic? And she said she turned and looked, and he was gone. And then the next thing they know, they see feet and looked around, and there he was down. So it had happened just that quick. But now another thing is, is he had agonal breathing. It's where it's the kind of like a body memory. The muscle memory is trying to breathe, but it's not adequate enough. And had just a lay person come up, they would have thought, okay, he's breathing. So they'd prolong doing CPR mm -hmm. because he's got a breath. But now trained, that's where some trained people will come up and say, that's not a knife and a natural breathing. Mm -hmm. So they would go ahead and assess and start their CPR. So and the agonal breathing's not enough to carry enough oxygen to the brain. Debbie Maupin and Steve Murley are the firefighters who saved a man's life in Schnooks last year. Thank you so much for coming by to talk with us. It's been a pleasure mm -hmm. talking about your experiences. Thank you. Thank you.